Welcome to the CAFRI help video for DARA Online Services Manure Storage Calculator. To complete the Manure Storage Calculator, you will require a copy of the nitrate stock count from APHIS. After logging on to DARA Online Services and selecting the CAFRI Nutrient Calculators, I will then select the Manure Storage Calculator. I will be working through a dairy farm example in this video. On the home page, you will see an option to select the appropriate report year and four further options to enter manure produced, dirty water produced, details of storage tank sizes and a report option. The first step is to select the report year. In this example, I have selected the 2021 year. Then select the manure produced option to enter manure produced by the livestock on the farm. I can select any of these sections which are relevant to the farm and input information. Firstly, I will select slurry producing livestock. As this is a dairy farm example, I will select cattle and sheep slurry. However, there is another option to enter slurry production for pigs and poultry. In this example, the average number of livestock is taken from the APHIS nitrate stock count. The manure storage average for dairy cows is 110 dairy cows, six cattle aged over two years, 32 cattle aged one to two years, 16 dairy bred calves aged six months to one year, and 26 dairy bred calves aged not to six months. When all of the information has been entered, I will scroll to the bottom of the page and select Save. We can now see in this example that the dairy cattle have produced 50.58 metres cubed of slurry per week. Select Return to Livestock menu. An allowance can be made for livestock on bedded accommodation if livestock are outwintered or if slurry is exported for processing over the winter period. There is also an option to calculate how much storage capacity is required for poultry units where this is applicable. I will now select Return to the main menu. I will now select Dirty Water Produced. I will select any of the sections which apply to this example. Firstly, I will select Rainfall Falling on Unroofed Yards where slurry is produced. In this section, enter a description, slurry type, and dimensions of the unroofed yard area where slurry is produced. This area is an unroofed yard where cattle cross, where there is potential for slurry to be produced. The description is yard where cattle cross. Then select the slurry type from the drop down options. I will select cattle and sheep slurry. Enter the length, which in this case is 10 metres, and a breadth of 4 metres. Then select the Add Record button to save the information. If any changes need to be made, you can select the Edit button, or if you wish to delete an entry, select Delete. When all of the information has been entered, I will click on Return to Main Menu. I will now select rainfall entering unroofed rectangular tanks, middens and earth bank lagoons. Use the description box. This is for the lagoon, so I enter lagoon. Then select the slurry type from the drop down box, cattle and sheep, and enter the length, which is 33 metres, and the breadth of 14 metres. The lagoon catches the washings from the parlour and scraping down for the collection yard. Select Add Record and then Return to Main Menu. I will now select Rainfall Entering Unroofed Above Ground Circular Stores. I'll add my description, which is Circular Tank, Slurry Type, which is Cattle and Sheep and a radius which is 7 metres. 
remember to select Add Record. The radius is a straight line measurement from the centre of the circular tank to the interior wall. Then I will select Return to Main Menu. Assuming that water from roofs is collected using spouting and sealed down pipes, and water from clean yards is diverted to storm drains and does not enter the slurry tanks, I do not need to select water from clean yards and roofs entering tanks for this example. I will now select other yard water surface runoff from open silos. I will enter the description open silo 1, select the slurry type from the drop down box, this is cattle and sheep, and then enter the length, which is 18 metres, and the breadth, which is 30 metres. I will now enter open silo 2. Again, selecting the slurry type from the drop down box, cattle and sheep, and then enter the length of 17 metres and the breadth of 30 metres, remembering to select the add record button to save the entry. Assuming that both silos are open for the winter period, the water that runs off the open silo needs to be collected. I'll now select return to main menu. Finally, I will select dairy parlour and building washings. Enter the number of dairy cows, in this example 110. The quantity of parlour washings is calculated at a standard figure of 0.13 metres cubed per cow per week. However, in some cases where this figure is significantly different, the actual amount can be used. Building washings for poultry, pig, cattle and sheep houses can also be entered on this page. At the bottom of the page, this information box explains how to calculate the washings for each enterprise. Now select Save. We can now see the volume of dirty water produced per week by the dairy cows in this example. For pig and poultry enterprises, volumes of dirty water will be shown in a separate column. When all of the information has been added, select Return to Main Menu. I will now select Storage Tank Size. It is important to ensure that tanks are measured correctly, opposed to estimating the dimensions. Safely measure the internal tank dimensions rather than the slat width. Also, safely measure the tank depth. Where the floor is sloped, then take an average depth measurement. For tanks constructed after the 1st of December 2003, allow a freeboard of 300 mm. It may be helpful to divide irregular shaped tanks into sections for ease of measuring, for example, tank 1A, tank 1B, etc. Firstly, I will select rectangular tanks and concrete lagoons. The first tank I will add is called Calf House in the description. The slurry type from the drop down box I will select Cattle and Sheep. The internal dimensions are a length of 16.5 metres, a breadth of 6.1 metres, and this tank has a depth of 2.5 metres. However, I have subtracted 300 millimetres freeboard, giving an adjusted depth of 2.2 metres. The dry cow house collects the slurry type Cattle and Sheep and the dimensions are 18.7 metres length, 8.5 metres breadth, and an adjusted depth of 2.4 metres. Remembering to select Add Tank to save the entry. The cow house has an L-shaped tank, so I have divided this into two rectangular tanks to ensure the calculations are accurate. The description of the tank can be any name as long as it is relevant and I know which tank it refers to. Each tank requires a description, slurry type and dimensions. Remember to select Add Tank after inputting the required information for each tank before moving on to the next tank. When all of the tanks have been entered, select Return to Slurry Tank menu. I will now select Earthbank Lagoons. The description for the Earthbank Lagoon is Lagoon. I will select Cattle and Sheep as the slurry type from the drop down menu. The length of 33 metres, 
breadth of 14 metres and depth of 2.15 metres. The adjusted depth is calculated by subtracting 750 millimetres from the total depth, giving the adjusted depth of 1.9 metres. Click on Add Tank to save the entry. Now select Return to the Slurry Tank menu. Finally, select Above Ground Circular Stores. The circular tank is used for dairy cow slurry, so I will select Cattle and Sheep from the slurry drop down box. It has a radius of 7 metres and an adjusted depth of 5.2 metres. The adjusted depth is calculated by subtracting 300 millimetres from the total depth. Select Add Tank and then select Return to Main Menu. When all of the information regarding slurry tanks has been entered, select Return to Main Menu. Finally, select Report. The report can either be printed or downloaded and saved electronically. I am going to download the report. The report details the number of weeks storage, weeks required and any additional storage required. In this example, there are 25.79 weeks storage. Dairy farms require 22 weeks storage. In this example, there is sufficient storage available for the winter period. Where there is not enough storage available, the report will highlight the volume of additional storage required. Having some additional storage can be particularly useful in the event of poor weather conditions at either end of the close period, where livestock may have to be housed earlier than planned, or alternatively, if ground conditions do not permit the spreading of slurry at the end of the close period. Scrolling down through the report, there is a summary of livestock details and the slurry production details for dairy cattle. If this was a mixed enterprise farm, the report would show a summary of all livestock types and also the slurry production details for all livestock. The bottom of the report details dirty water production and also the slurry tank capacities, including the total dirty water produced per week and total slurry storage capacity available on the whole farm. The dirty water production details identify the various sources of water entering the slurry tanks and can be used to make management decisions to minimise clean water entering slurry stores. The report can assist with management decisions as it outlines where dirty water is produced.